Jason Bateman is one of the most beloved actors in Hollywood, both with his colleagues and his audience. He has poise, he has sharpness, and he has wit. And we love to watch him. Is he underrated? Maybe a little. But I'll tell you something. He is one hell of an actor to watch. And we're going to talk about him here in the Actors Room, episode number 116. I hope you enjoy the show. Here we go. personality. Jason Bateman, he's loaded with it. Am I right? We like to watch him. It's simple. It's plain. But why do we like to watch an actor like Jason Bateman? If you agree with me, it's because he's engaging. He's fun. And he uses one of his most special traits or skills. One that I hold very dear to my heart. And I think is vital in becoming a very successful actor. And that special trait is improv skills. Jason Bateman is a master at improv. It was instilled in him at a very young age. If you don't know this, Jason Bateman has been acting since he was 10. (laughs) 10 years old. He was practically a baby. And he's been doing it for that long. He was born in 1969. So think about it. Pretty much his whole life has been in front of the camera. He knows what he's doing. He grew up in that world. Born in 1969. His dad, Kent, was an actor. A writer. A director. Guess what? He loved the arts. And he brought his son, Jason, to art houses and things like that, movies, instead of taking him to ball games. Kent, his father, wanted to show Jason his passion and hoped and prayed that Jason would love it too. And Jason did. He admired his dad, looked up to him, Wanted to please him and found that acting, performing, art was something he enjoyed. Well, there was one day one of Jason's neighbors was going to an audition. And Jason was invited to tag along. And wouldn't you know it, at the age of 10, Jason got his first role off of his first audition. How many times I've heard this, where a kid going in, To an audition. Gets it on his first try. You know what that tells me? They're naturals. Jason Bateman was and is. To this very day. A natural. He was sort of. I don't know. His makeup. Was meant to be in this field. I mean. He looks at home. On the screen. He does. It's sort of easy for somebody like Jason to succeed in auditions. He's personable. He's fun, engaging, funny, fun and funny. You know what I mean. I think when Jason at a young age walked into an audition, he made the other people, the casting directors, very comfortable. He was relatable. They could mold his talent. And Jason was successful at a young age. He got commercials very easily. And because he did so well. And was such a cute kid. He would get parts. In the future. His first commercial netted him $300. And to a 10 year old that was the world. He was making money. Playing. And he hated school. He ditch 
And he was making money as an actor. He felt that was his life. School? What's that? <laughs> I make money as an actor. He was getting other roles in commercials, too. He was doing commercials for Golden Grams. He was doing commercials for Corn Flakes. He was the serial uh, king or duke. <laughs> Making money and his dad was proud that his son was being successful as an actor. His dad, Kent, saw all this potential. My son's doing so well. And at a very young age, his dad, Kent, said, why don't you do a few workshops with me? Kent ran a workshop, an improv workshop. And he had his son, Jason, tag along and do workshops, do skits, play around in front of the camera. And Jason was good at it. Jason was getting some really good work with his father doing improv. This is so valuable. And in his work, you see it. He's been doing this since he was 10. And with a very impressionable young man who was already interested in acting, getting improv study at this age, I mean, it's going to be like brushing your teeth, breathing. The seed of improv was planted way early and would stick with Jason for the rest of his life. And you could see it. His first big role, right? Little House on the Prairie. He lands Little House, starring with Michael Landon. It wasn't a guest appearance. He wasn't an extra. He had a one-year contract. This kid getting steady work so young. No wonder he skipped school. What the hell you need school for? One-year contract with Michael Landon. He got the part because he stood out in front of all the other kids. His dad was an integral part in Jason getting the part in Little House on the Prairie. He prepped him. He coached him. On the ride there in the car, his dad, Kent, sort of riled him up. He's like, Jason, this scene that you're reading for is very emotional. You know it. I know it. You got to cry. Jason's a little kid. <laughs> uh, getting a kid to cry on cue, that's got to be freaking hard. Rob Reiner, working with River Phoenix and Stand By Me, struggled in getting River to cry in that crucial scene in Stand By Me. I mean, it took hours. And we're talking about River Phoenix. Jason Bateman auditioning for Little House was being riled up by his father in the car on the way there to cry in the audition. His dad said, if you cry in this audition, you're going to fucking get the role. And you know it. Jason cried at the audition on cue. And he got the job. See how crucial his dad was in his career? Kent knew his son was good. And not only that, capable of crying on cue. He knew his son was special. He relished in it and became his manager because the kid was getting jobs on a consistent basis. The keys to Jason was his million dollar smile, his smart wit, and his charisma. Even as a kid, you saw it. It landed him many auditions, which means you're going to get some roles. And after Little House, he struggled to take school seriously. He was so bad in school that his parents took him out of the school he was in and enrolled him in a special school for child actors. They catered to the special talents, and that's where Jason needed to be. Jason was plainly goofing off, skipping school, hanging out with his friends because he worked all the time. And whenever he had downtime, he played. He made it a point to play in his spare time. And because Jason was so successful in his career, it opened a door for his sister, Justine. And if you know this story, Justine Bateman, 
of course, the sister of Jason, landed a big role on Family Ties. She played Mallory. And it was a perfect role for her. Very successful. And although Justine hasn't reached the heights uh, in the future for herself, compared to Jason, you know, she's a pretty good actress in her own right. So as kids, Jason and Justine were working. And both parents became managers of their kids. Jason remarks that there are good and bads to successful child actors. The good being you had this high level of responsibility. You're being responsible and you have to be. Because if you're not, you'll fall. And even if you do fall from time to time, your parents are there to pick you up, to keep you going on the right track professionally. And their parents were there for their kids. And I want to mention this because Jason and Justine did have a solid um, backing with their parents, which is rare for child actors. The parents become stargazed. And they turn their heads to practices that happen on set. Thank God Jason and Justine had good parents. Good managers. And although his parents took Jason and Justine's money from their jobs to support the family. (laughs) They were actually good parents. And kept the kids sort of out of the bad stuff of Hollywood. This is vital. Because... Of this, I feel that Jason's success in the future was possible. And although Jason in the future will run into problems with drugs and alcohol, I think it was his parents' guidance that helped them get through that shit. Jason grew up as an actor. He landed the role of Ricky Schroeder's friend. And I want to say brother. For some reason in my head, In my memory, I thought that Jason's role in Silver Spoons was the brother of Ricky Schroeder. Wrong. It was his friend. And I apologize in the past. I've said that and mentioned that. That Jason was his brother. Now, he was just a friend. But I remember Jason in that role as a kid. And Ricky Schroeder was fine, right? I liked the show. I, it was entertaining. I watched it a lot. But I remembered Jason Bateman even back then. And I liked him. He was so... It's so kind of hard to pinpoint the specific trait that makes him special. Uh, he stands out when he's around other actors in the show. Even back then. Is it the personality? Is it that simple? Because that's Jason. And I think his dad told him that just be yourself, Jason. You're already interesting. You're an interesting person. Go with that. Because if you fake it, it's so obvious. And what you see from Jason, even back then on Silver Spoons, he was that smart aleck sort of con man personality, always trying to hit on the the older woman in the show he was so good at it he was such a little uh, a prick <laughs> but he was good at it though y- you liked him even though he was kind of a prick on the show <laughs> y- you liked him it's hard to do uh, when you're given a part that's not likable and you still pull it off and like the guy that's something to be proud of And he'll run into future projects where he's not likable. And just being himself was enough to make him likable. He's a rare talent. And I have to say this. My brother Dave absolutely adores Jason Bateman. he, He loves him. He's got a bit of a man crush on Jason. That's fine. I have a few of my own. I mean, I I really do like Jason Bateman. But my brother, he loves. It's for you, Dave. (laughs) Doing research on Jason the past couple of weeks, it's been fun. Just learning about him and diving a little bit more into what makes him so special. 
I wasn't surprised by it. I said, yeah, I got it. It, it. The guy's good. And he's been doing it for so long. Uh, it's like eventually his success was going to pay off. And it did. Because the guy struggled. I mean, plain and simple, I'm going to tell you right now. It wasn't all just sunshine for this kid. This guy. Throughout his entire lifetime and career, the, he was up and down a lot. But he stuck with it. Uh, it was hard for him to keep his head above water. But he loves acting. He loves directing too. And we'll get into that. Uh, there was a project he promoted when he was 15 years old. It was a show called It's Your Move. And during this promotion phase, he actually appeared on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. 15 years old. He went up there, and I can't even imagine it, the pressure, uh, nervousness that I would have. I couldn't even do that now. I'm 44, and just thinking about going on a talk show and sitting down and just being yourself, okay, uh, that petrifies me. It just does. But 15-year-old Jason Bateman didn't phase him. There's clips of this you can watch on YouTube. He's relaxed. He's talking to Johnny like he's just sitting there talking to a, a family member. And Carson treats him like an adult, asking him questions. And Jason's answering him calmly, is witty, you know, plays along with the Johnny's jokes. A very lighthearted conversation. And Jason showed maturity. He showed the ability to just be himself. Uh, an ability that's not easy. He had what it took to sort of play the game. Do it well. Be a part of that world. This other world, this Hollywood game, was a game Jason knew from the very beginning. Was comfortable Around people in the business. He sat across from Johnny Carson. Like it was no big deal. It, that's not easy. It, it's an innate ability. You can't teach. It's just there. And he was in the game. And he was there to stay. No matter what would happen. He would be a part of this world. For the rest of his life. He knew it back then. I believe that. I think he knew that when he was 15. He was talking to Johnny about. How he was dating girls at that time. And. How, how he did dates. Like he was talking to his dad. <laughs> what a kid. What a guy. It, it seemed like he was born middle aged. Although he liked to play around. I mean he was a kid. But he had a certain maturity. That, uh, 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 smartness. Intelligence. IQ pretty high. I mean he knew that he was witty. And he used that. It's plain. And what makes him a special, not only a special guy, um, but a special friend. I think that Jason is the type of guy that holds on to friendships. He doesn't break them. There's an actor he worked with on the Hogan's family, which we're going to get into in just a second, that will appear in Jason's films. Little parts. Because Jason and him are close. It was cute. I was watching one of his projects the other day. And I said, I haven't seen that actor since Hogan's family. And then I watched another Jason Bateman project. And it's the same actor. I said, what are the coincidences of that? They got to be buddies. And they are. So Jason is a nice guy. He's approachable. He's fun. And he's a good friend. Now, I said he got the Harper's family, but that wasn't the original title. The original title was Valerie, if you remember. Valerie Harper's show. Well, Valerie had disagreements about, I don't know, how the show was going. She wanted to put her input into the show. The producer said, uh, no, you're just an actress. We run it. And she said, well, if I don't have some say, I'm gone. So they said goodbye. So... Valerie show no more it was then called the Hogan's and then eventually the Hogan's family and I remember this show I watched it religiously and the reason why I did is because of Jason he was the best part of that show he was the funniest part of that show and there are a few moments I remember that 
I'll never forget watching that show because of Jason. So not only did I remember Silver Spoons, but I remember the Harper's family because of him. There are always that certain actor on a show you really like. They're your favorite. They're the reason why you watch. You tune in to see them. And for me, that was Jason early in my life. And it sort of continued down the road. Jason claims that the Harper's family was his favorite job. That's noteworthy. And I think it was because of this. Jason was so in tune with what he was doing. Getting so good at his improv skills. That it became the central part of his life. He became so involved with everything on set. That he became intrigued with the prospect of directing. Now this really interested Jason. And he became the youngest director ever in entertainment. When he directed four episodes of The Harper's Family, he was 18 years young. (laughs) Good for you, Jason. And wow. He was so interested in directing, they allowed him to try it. He must have not only begged, but followed the director around for weeks, months. Asking him questions, saying, "Uh, can I do the next one, the next shot? And can I take notes about what you're doing? Because I'm interested in it. Maybe I'd like to do this in the future. It's the persistence of some of these artists that pay off eventually. And being known as the very youngest director ever in the Screen Actors Guild is one hell of an achievement. It goes to show you how talented and driven Mr. Bateman is. Okay, his first movie role. Can you guess it? Think of a movie he did when he was young, teenager, right? Like 18, 19. It was bad. Not good. (laughs) He hated it. He's a little embarrassed by it. (laughs) Teen Wolf 2. Teen Wolf 2. It was bad. Now, he jokes about it now. And he gets a kick out of it. Sort of making fun of the fact he was in this movie. Saying it was Oscar nominated. (laughs) It's one of the least uh, rated shows ever on IMDb. I think it has a 3 rating. I don't think I've ever seen a three rating. Ouch. (laughs) You'd think think a a bomb like that would just crush (laughs) your career. And Jason's got to be thinking that. After this movie came out and realizing how horrible it was, he's thinking, by God, I'm done. I'm a... I guess I'll be doing B-movies for the rest of my life. (laughs) But no, sir. No way. Not for Jason. It was just merely a blip. (laughs) This small blip on his radar. His career. For there'll be other blips as well. It's just part of the game, Jason. He should have known that. I mean, even I know that. Doing research on these people. Doing research on films. Uh, There are so many of these artists that struggle. And they should. That's just the way it happens. But you got to stick with it. Because if you don't, you'll just end up, you know, working at Subway. But Jason knew it. There'd be failures. So he took on several television roles, shows, commercials uh, after Teen Wolf 2. Had to shed that wolf thing. Even Michael J. Fox hated being in Teen Wolf, the original. And Jason hated it even more. But he decided to really concentrate on television. And he did. He had a lot of auditions. He had a lot of shows. One of them was called Simon. One of the lowest rated shows of 1995. Another called Chicago Sons. 
This one lasted one season. The next one, George and Leo. Now, these are all TV sitcoms. George and Leo was next. Same fate is the last one. One season. Another one came along. Right after this one. Called Some of My Best Friends. Bombing. So he had four straight sitcoms. Where he starred in. Four chances. Almost back to back. That bombed. That sucked. They they went beyond pilots and actually were on the air. But didn't last beyond one season. You hope and pray to get a role. And he did. And then you get into this character. You get into the show. You sink your teeth into it. And hope and pray it succeeds. And doesn't. Ah. (laughs) It was because of all this bullshit in the 90s. That Jason turned to alcohol mostly. Mostly. But drugs as well. He worked his whole childhood. He worked hard. He was responsible. And never ever really played. Because he worked. In the 90s he sort of caught up. Felt that I worked really hard. And because I worked so hard. And made pretty good money. I deserve to play. And play he did folks. He drank a lot. He smoked a lot. And he did some drugs. He didn't just get buzzed. He felt because I'm buzzed. I might as well get drunk. And then thought. If I'm drunk already. Why not just get blackout drunk. And when that happens. It's dangerous. And Jason knew that. Although he kept at it. For about 10 years. Of hardcore partying. And the like. (laughs) Sort of. Going through a phase, I don't think he felt himself to be an alcoholic. It was just that, a phase. And then he stopped. He sort of needed to do those things to, I don't know about just going through a phase, but just to do it. Jason Bateman hasn't had a drink in about 20 years. He was just done with it. He didn't need a program like AA. He just stopped. Good for him. So the sitcom failures did a number on him. There were frustrating times. He's getting work, yes. But nothing sticks. So he's trying to figure it out. Is it me? I mean, here I am. Four straight sitcoms. And nothing. Maybe it is me. Jason, it's not. <laughs> it's not it, Jason, it's not you. It's the writing, probably. The other people around you. The chemistry. And a lot of things sort of have to happen. To make a sitcom pop. And it finally will. For pretty soon. He will land the job of his life. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Arrested Development is one of the funniest shows you'll ever watch. And there are a lot of shows out there. Great shows, funny shows. You watch, you enjoy. But think of Arrested Development. It's different. It ain't your run-of-the-mill show. It's got a comedy all on its own. And it's a very sh- a tough show to pull off. Because it's so quirky and different. The comedy, so rare. That just... Doing it is a risk. And that's what they told him. They said Jason. His agents. Said Jason. The show. It's going to be number five. On your list of failures. And I'm telling you that right now. But Jason said. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to try to make this one work. Damn it. And he did. He was the star. He was sort of the dry guy. Keeping the family together. And. His character was somewhat unlikable. And this concerned Jason a lot going into the show. My character, not that likable. And he was scared. And he he sought refuge with one of his co-workers and dear friends. And had a meeting with them and said, I'm really liking the show. I think it's a great show. But 
my character itself is it's just not a likable guy and i'm afraid that i won't give it its its due respect and people aren't going to like the show because they're just not going to like me and his friend said jason don't fret you're one of the nicest guys the funniest guys i'll ever know be you do what you've been doing your whole career your whole life it'll happen if you just do it the way you're supposed to do it. Trust yourself. By God, he took that advice. Thank you, he did. And it sparked his career. This is a great show. I watch it from time to time because it's a clinic and sitcom sort of lore. And it's got great moments and characters that you've never seen before. <laughs> and, and Jason's sort of thrown into this weird world where he's the normal one and is sort of tempted to be bad. And will sort of give in from time to time. But he's a good guy. And you like Jason as Michael Bluth. There's a lot I can say about Arrested Development. I don't have the time. Uh, you know the show. You know Michael Bluth and his character and everybody around him, how fun they are. And Jason loves Will Arnett. He loves him. He would marry him if he could. And Jason also has a close relationship and bond with Vince Vaughn, who he will work with in the future. But Arrested Development proves to Jason Bateman he's back, baby. And his future is bright. And thank God. We deserve watching somebody like Jason. Um, Think of the roles he's going to have next. All the film roles that I will mention. uh, Appearances that he'll make on television. uh, SNL appearance. uh, He's in a Mumford and Sons uh, video. Okay. He's just fun. He enjoys doing what he's doing. He's one of those actors. He just he relishes in improving with his friends, doing fun projects, just being himself. So some of the projects, of course, in films that I want to note that he did uh, that were sort of sticking out to me uh, with moments that he had was Necessary Roughness, the football movie with Scott Bakula. Bacula, Bacula, whatever. <clears throat> Quantum Leap guy. He was in that. And although it wasn't a big role, I remember him. My brother Dave likes this movie because of Jason Bateman, who has a very small role. You like him. He's funny. He just has that about him. He's fun to watch. What else did he do back then? Dodgeball. Dodgeball. You love Rip Torn, right? In that movie, you love Jason Bateman too. The stupid announcer at the dodgeball tournament. He's good at that stuff. He's in Starsky and Hutch with Vince Vaughn. Alongside with Dodgeball. So that's when they met, clicked, became instant friends. Then there's Juno. And he gives a dramatic role. And he succeeds. Jason Bateman is an actor. He's good at his personality traits on screen. And we like him. But he's an actor. And we'll talk about his latest projects at the end of this podcast. Because I think his career is going to go in a different way. Very soon, if not already. But here's some of the other movies that he's known for and loved. The Breakup, The X, The Promotion, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Extract, good movie. The Invention of Lying, another small role that he just fucking nails. Uh, Couples Retreat, The Switch, Horrible Bosses, The Change Up, Identity Thief, and Bad Words. But it's projects like Juno, Up in the Air, The Longest Week. The Gift, for God's sakes. The Gift. Watch The Gift. And The Outsider, which was done not that long ago, he directed the first two episodes. 
The Outsider is a show that has 10 episodes. Jason Bateman directed the first two episodes. And folks, those are the only two episodes worth watching. Why? Oh, gee, I don't know. Maybe because Jason was involved in those episodes. Folks, this is a very talented man. Very talented. He's starting to spread his wings. Big time. Big time. It is no coincidence at all. That show, The Outsider, sucks without him. (laughs) Does. It's no uh, mystery. Zero mystery there. First two, three episodes of that show are really good. I'm interested in the show. After Jason Bateman left that show, it's a snooze fast. You're like, but where's Jason? Does Jason show up yet? Oh, he, that's right. He died. Fuck. Is he going to direct any more episodes? No? Fuck. His directing is getting really good. He directed a lot of Ozark episodes. Another great show. My wife loves that show. I love that show. Ozark. What a great show. It's dark. You you see another side of Jason in Ozark if you've never seen it. If you have, yes. (laughs) He brings his snarkiness. He's good at that. Uh, the same with Laura Linney, who stars alongside him in Ozark. She's unlikable. Folks, Laura Linney is unlikable, but she is damn good at it. Oh, she is a fine actress. She is great at being unlikable. Uh, Jason, on the other hand, can take an unlikable character and make him likable. So what does that tell me? What is that? That Laura Linney, who is a phenomenal actress... She works moment to moment. She does her fucking research. And she's good at being an actress. At her job. She works all the time. She gets a lot of work. Because she's good at what she does. But she's unlikable, folks. She is. Jason, on the other hand, takes an unlikable character. And you kind of like him. So what is, that's the tough part for me. Drawing that line where it's like, okay, is Laura Linney better because she's supposed to be unlikable? So she's doing her job. So you get somebody who watches that and you ask them, well, you don't like that character, right? You go, no, I don't like that character. So that actor's doing their job. They're supposed to be unlikable. I don't like them. Great work. But then you have... Another character that's supposed to be unlikable, but you sort of root for them. Is that in the text? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe they're supposed to be unlikable. But because Jason, in life, is likable, (laughs) his personality, right... Comes through. He's likable. Okay. So his character is likable. Could that be it? And then I think of his role in The Gift. A film he did. And we're talking about Jason right now. When he did The Gift. He was just unlikable. So. (laughs) He could do that too. And I find it interesting there are roles out there where there's unlikable characters that can be liked. Dexter. I bring up Dexter so much because why is it we root for a serial killer? <laughs> I mean, they can't be easy to do. The homework that Michael C. Hall had to do to pull off Dexter was not easy. But he's amazing. So there you go. Michael C. Hall was in Game Night with Jason Bateman. I watched that last week. God, I love Game Night. What a funny movie. That movie was so funny. The first time I watched it, I had to watch it again the next day. I don't do that very often. 
uh, hardly ever. Game Night was a good, solid comedy, and I recommend it. You want to watch something funny as hell? Game Night starring Jason Bateman is worth it. Jason loves to direct. And I think that's where he's going to be going in the future more than acting. I do. I think that the older he gets, the more directing he's going to do. Uh, Just look at his recent work, Ozark and The Outsider. He's directing. And I really think that as good as he is as an actor and how fun he is and so on. Uh, We've sort of fallen in love with that guy. But there's a lot more around the corner for this guy. Don't be surprised to see darker stuff, more challenging roles, dramatic roles, and directing. He says that he tries to find the good people in Hollywood. And if he can't find them, he finds the good in others. (laughs) He can't. He just can't help himself, folks. Uh, A good example is the actor Jeff Tambor. Jeff played his his dad in Arrested Development. Jeff Tambor is kind of a dick. I don't know him. I get a bad vibe from Mr. Tambor. (laughs) And he sort of made some waves on the Arrested Development set with one of his coworkers. And this is Jeff. Jason stood up for him. And Jason knows that Jeff is sort of a prick. But Jason respects the way Jeff goes about his work. That's the way Jeff is. That's the way he approaches his work. He's kind of a dick. Jason respects that. Uh, Jason sees results. Okay. And if they're good results. You know. I don't really care how you got there. You're a great teammate. We got to the end product. So he stuck up for Jeff. Saw the good in him. And I think that's valuable with the director. Uh, Jason has said that he hates directors that are narrow-minded. And when Jason gets behind the camera, he doesn't want to be like that. He's an actor's director too. He knows what it takes. So those are the director's That people want to work with. And I'm sure. (laughs) I'm sure. There are many people that want to work with Jason. When he directs. Jason Bateman. Has been in the Hollywood game. Since he was 10. He's seen a few things. Here and there. (laughs) He taps into. His emotion. Very easily. He presents his quirky personality. And he enjoys performing. He was born to do it. He's a good man too. He does his best to trust others. And respects the way they work. He wants to be the best actor and director he can. And he wants to be liked. It all makes sense to him. The way an actor goes about his craft. You have to. Understand yourself, he says. And that's not easy, but you have to push through the bullshit. It's his sharpness and poise that I respect about this man, this artist. The advice that he likes giving to actors, and he loves giving advice, by the way, he wants to share his success. He says, listen to people. People actually have valuable things to say. And one of the tips he gives anybody auditioning is don't be afraid. Be prepared. Learn your lines. Come into the room knowing what the hell you're doing. Casting directors smell fear. Don't be afraid. Give them something. Give them a part of you. Get along with them. Joke around. Show them yourself. They want to see that. He says, if you come in desperate, you will fail. He loves meeting other actors. Ones that are working and ones that aren't. There's always something to learn from actors and artists. 
even if you're successful or not. There's always a piece of somebody that you'll find inspiration from. Capture the moments in your life. Always be present in your reality. Even creating moments is never a wrong thing to do. When you're stuck, create. There's something special about creating life off of paper, he says. The written words present opportunity. And in that is the creation of something new in life. That's exciting. That should give you passion. A few personal notes as I wrap up this episode of Jason Bateman. He speaks very highly of his wife, Amanda. And Amanda is the daughter of Paul Anka. The famous singer. So Jason is married to a famous singer's daughter. And they've been together for a long time. Have two beautiful daughters together. And Jason is a good family man. And for me, that means a lot. When I see these actors, these successful actors, a lot of shit going on, work, stress, and they're able to sort of uh, be a family. Uh a happy family. And that seems to be the road Jason's on. He's a family man. And he's successful. He seems to be a good dad. Love that. Uh, Jason knows that he's an anal person. <laughs> he's uptight, he says. And that kind of shows through in his work. That's, yeah, His characters are kind of anal and uptight. So. He says, that's me. <laughs> And we we kind of like him for it because a lot of us out there are uptight. We are. It's stress. Uh, there's a lot of stress in Jason. But I think acting helps him sort of, uh, you know, get in touch with that side of him. He lets it out. Thank God he can do that. Jason loves to jog. He jogs five miles a day. Uh, he doesn't need music to listen to when he jogs. He says that his thoughts are enough. His Saturday Night Live appearance in 2005, he says, was the greatest week of my life. His favorite films are Kings of Comedy with Robert De Niro and There Will Be Blood. No wonder I love Jason. (laughs) He loves coffee, he says. Uh, I can drink it all day. No problem. One actor he's never worked with but would love to is Bill Murray. God, I hope that happens someday. His biggest fear is bees. Yeah, I was talking to my cousin the other day, or we were in a group text, and he mentioned that he has bees outside his house and how he was stung when he was a kid messing with a bee's nest. I did the same thing. I hit a bee's nest with a baseball bat, and they chased me for a few blocks. Uh, they got me. Oh, they won't stop. The bees, you fuck with them, they will get you. Jason, he's afraid of bees. Jason said that he got in a fight when he was a kid. Fourth grade. Nasty fight. It was so bad, this fight, that Jason ended up puncturing the other kid's spleen. Ooh. Jason's got a good right hook. Uh, This affected Jason so much. He said, and I quote, My hands have been in my pockets ever since, end quote. Jason has been nominated for many awards. Uh, Most recent work, of course, was Arrested Development, Ozark, and The Outsider. He won an Emmy for his directing in Ozark. And boy, did he fucking deserve that. The future is bright. Brighter for this artist. It seems like to me, he's just starting to blossom. Is that possible? As talented and successful as he's been in his career. I feel the best is yet to come. That's how talented he is. Do you agree with me? How fascinated are you about Jason Bateman? Am I alone on this? I think my brother would agree with me. The future is so bright for this man. Uh, He's in his 50s now. And it seems like 
the best is yet to come, as I repeat myself. So we will see. Thank you for listening to this edition of The Actors Room. My name is Jeff Tarowski. I hope you enjoyed the show. Hope everybody out there is having a great day, a great night, whatever the case is. Uh, I hope that you're enjoying your life. We work hard, okay? And like Jason, working hard, he played hard too. Be careful out there. Don't play too hard. <laughs> be responsible, okay? It, it be responsible. You having a drink? Just have a few. <laughs> Cut yourself off. Tune in, for I will uh, be just reeling off shows in the near future. Uh, I, This year has been strange. The actor's room has slipped up. Uh, I have been completely obsessed with other projects. And I need to get myself back on track. So uh, stick with me. Uh, My audience is small. uh, So if you've stuck with me, thank you. The episodes, they're coming. I have them all lined up, all in a row. So... Stay tuned. Next week, new episode, a new actor to talk about. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for listening. Watch that movie. Enjoy the hell out of it. Enjoy your family. Have some laughs. Uh, Enjoy the company of the people around you. doesn't have to be your family. It could be friends, uh, people you just met. Pick up the phone. Call up that girl. Call up that guy you've had your eye on, right? Appreciate life. Live it. Be inspired. Go to the art museum. View art. Listen to music. That's what I do. When I'm stuck artistically, I put in music that I love and boom, I'm inspired. I get something out of it. It's something inside me. It, It sparks with interest. And the same could be said when I watch certain artists like Jason Bateman. They, they get me excited. Uh, some people watch a performance and think whatever. And there are other actors I watch and, and they, they get me revved up. They, I feel their positivity, their love of the art form. And that's why I do the show. And I also hope I give uh, decent advice uh, decent information that you could take with you and maybe share with others. Like little tidbits that you could talk to about somebody either in the business or at home or at work or at the bar, right? Whatever. If I could give just a couple seconds <laughs> of maybe starting a conversation, great. Love it. So tune in next week. Take care. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a good one.